Hi, this is Mike Brown, owner of Death Wish Coffee Company. Welcome to Fueled by Deathcast. I love Java, Death Wish Coffee presents Fueled by Deathcast, the world's strongest podcast. With your hosts, the incredible Jeff and the amazing D Man. Welcome, everybody, to another exciting episode of Fueled by Deathcast. There you go, just assuming it's going to be exciting again. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think we're consistently exciting, so I'm not assuming anything. Well, yeah, I know that we've been exciting up until now, but you can't just assume <laughs> we're going to be exciting today. Damn it. Unless we're exciting already. Maybe we are. This is episode 103 for you guys keeping track at home. Nobody's keeping track at home, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say anything? No! <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're in rare form today. Um, I, as always, am the incredible Jeff. And I am the ornery D-man. <laughs> the amazing D-man, <laughs> some will call him. And uh, at the top of the show, I just want to take a second to thank our good friend, Brock Powell. BrockVox.com. He is the voice actor on this show and a thousand voices out there in the world. Go check him out on all social media, at BrockVox. And if you happen to be near Disneyland in California during the month of December, you can go visit him because he happens to be Santa Claus, Mm -hmm. which is pretty rad. Santa Santa Brock. Santa Brock. Brock Brock Claus. Brock Claus. (laughs) That sounds like a weird, like, German villain from, like, (laughs) like an Indiana Jones movie. Welcome to the Brock Claus. The Brock and Klaus. Oh, man. Um, And if you guys want to follow us on social media, it's super easy to do. I am at Jeff Wish Coffee. And I am at. Death Wish Dustin. And please, if you haven't yet, like we ask you every single week to take a second out of your day, go up to a random stranger on the street and ask them, have you followed Christian Slater on Instagram yet today? Because it is at Real Christian Slater. It's very easy to follow him. By the way, Jeff, cat's out of the bag. Uh, somebody found out how much Christian Slater was paying us to... Uh, put in these plugs for us so <laughs> so now uh people know yeah. it's, it's out that well, that christian slater is uh paying us huge lump sums of money to talk about christian slater. amounts of money we yes. get five dollars every time we say christian slater i wish we did because we would have a lot of money at this it point. would be <laughs> an hour-long podcast of us going christian slater christian <laughs> slater christian true. slater christian slater and that podcast is coming tomorrow get ready for <laughs> no, i'm just kidding um speaking of new podcasts though if you guys haven't heard uh you are listening to this one it comes out every single thursday with a new special guest and we have a great conversation about what they do why they do it and what fuels them to do it and um we just started the last couple weeks every sunday now we release a mini episode of our science segment from the fueled by death show and then every tuesday we release a mini episode of the roast and i'll tell you that most of them in the upcoming month are going to be very holiday themed and we're gonna have a lot of fun with those so uh you can tune in to even more content right on fueled by death cast wherever you're listening to it itunes spotify stitcher google music iHeartRadio, wherever that is um and uh, before we get into the show, I just wanted to let you guys know, too, it is now December. And uh, Dustin and myself said at the beginning of November, we weren't going to participate in No Shave November. Uh, because I, we- I did shave the mustache out of my mouth like twice. I actually uh, s- uh, nicked my mustache, if you had Yeah, noticed. no, I did notice. He got it like an Abraham Lincoln thing. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I got rid of it. And I'm not, I don't hate it, um, but... So, but it was December, so we were all in the clear. But we weren't going to shave that much anyways. But we realized that starting last year, No Shave November partnered with the American Cancer Society um, to raise money for that incredible organization. And the idea is is that you take the money that you normally would use in a month's worth of shaving and you donate it to their cause. And so we're going to do that in, in um, from Dustin and myself. We're donating $50 to cancer.org. And I'm going to put that link up right here. You guys can donate as well. It's a great thing to do for the holiday season. Um, American Cancer Society really, really helps out all those people and those families dealing with that terrible disease. And I I think it's just such a great thing to be able to do. I don't know a person who hasn't dealt with it, you know, with somebody related to them, it's, a friend. Yeah, it's, it's cancer so insanely just everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. So every little bit helps for the Cancer Society, you know, because it, it funds research, it funds, you know, treatment, it funds help for families and, and going through it. It, 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 uh, it really, really helps. So do you ever think in like 50 years we'll be looking back? 
and being like, I can't believe we even we even had to deal with cancers. Yes, I do believe that. I yeah. because the 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 amount of um, leaps and bounds we're making with medical science, I really do believe that mm. there will come a day where we'll, it'll just be like a light switch and it'll be like, oh. Oh, that's how we fix it. Yeah, I mean, what was it like 200 fucking years ago? We just started washing our hands between, you know, right. playing with corpses and delivering babies. Exactly. So, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I can't not see that in like 50 years. We're going to be looking back and now being like, oh, God, we were so medieval. How did we not know just to, to flip this body switch to totally uh, yeah, not deal with you cancer? You brought it up. I mean, like, look at the medieval times. You know, I mean, like, everybody talks about the bubonic plague, and it's like how that ravaged, you know, entire civilizations. Yeah. And it's just like, and now it's just like, nobody gets the plague anymore. Yeah, nobody even talks about like, it. Because you don't. I mean, there was, there are still rare, rare outbreaks of it, but, I mean, it's nothing like it was back then, and I hope one day cancer will be the same. It and will be. Yes. It will be, and thanks to the, uh, people like cancer.org. Yes. Secret code unlocked. Discount of death. This week until Wednesday, December 12th. That's right. We're like almost midway through December. I can't fucking believe it. But uh, hey, use the discount code VELVET. Jeff, spell that. V-E-L-V-E-T. That will nail you 15% off of my most prized merchandise product on our DeathWishCoffee.com page, which is the vacuum-sealed coffee canister that we get from a cool company called Planetary Designs. Love this canister. It sits on my kitchen, I all my kitchen counter all the time. Um, and it really, that vacuum seal keeps those beans fresh until I want to use them. It's excellent. It's yeah. an excellent thing. It's Everybody should have it, especially. And you can put beans, grounds, K-cups. You can put whatever you want in there. It's, yeah. It's really, really good. And all week long, 15% off, just use that code word, Velvet at checkout on deathwishcoffee.com. You always ask me, D-Man. So I'm going to ask you, why is it velvet? Because we got somebody very awesome on the podcast again. That is true. The legendary guitarist of Velvet Revolver, Dave Kushner. Uh, now, we had him on earlier, uh, I think it was this year? Uh, last year. Uh, maybe this year. Yeah. yeah. We, we had him on Handful before. Back, yeah. But yeah, but it was I'll just- I'll put that link up. Actually. It was just, I believe it was just on the phone. It was just on the phone, yeah. Um, well, Jeff and I, if you didn't hear, we went to beautiful Los Angeles. Yes. And we made a lot of house calls, and one of those house calls was Dave Kushner, and he couldn't have welcomed us more into his home. What an awesome dude. And we sat in his studio, yes. which you will now see us sitting down having an epic conversation with this dude. Yes, yeah. It was really cool to talk with Dave again because the first time we talked, obviously, everything Velvet Revolver and that kind of stuff. We talk a little bit more about that too, but he also is um, the, one of the two composers on the show, F is for Family. And now, if you missed last week's podcast episode, we had comedian Bill Burr on our very show talking about his Netflix original animated show, F is for Family. And we're just keeping that ball rolling with Dave because we talk about what it's like to compose music for an animated show. He even shows us a little bit of how he does it. I was watching uh, the new season last night yeah. and I finally got to that scene yeah. where he was showing us. I was like, oh, I saw this like, yeah. like a month ago. Yeah, it's <laughs> so, so cool. I love, I'm such a nerd for like special features like that yeah. and stuff like that. So it was really cool to talk to him about that in his home studio talking to him about all that we didn't take that picture did we no we didn't but it's a, it looks a, like we could have it's yeah. a damn good picture no we yeah. couldn't take that picture that's why i was surprised yeah. no we were too busy talking and, and and videotaping but uh if you guys oh, man i cannot wait for you guys to hear this episode and if you're just listening to this remember you can watch the whole thing over on the death wish coffee company youtube page or on our facebook page so mugs up this week for this week's death guest dave kushner the Fueled by Death Guest. All right, and another one is Bill, because you wouldn't expect him to be as proficient on drums as he is, you know, because yeah. he's so funny. It's like you focus all on that, and it's like, oh, my God, you got this other tool in your toolbox. Um, Do you guys play ever together, like, just at, at, for fun, or is it just for, like, stuff like this you find yourself, like, playing? We don't, like, hey, dude, jam. you want to jam? We you don't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> you can say it. I was just mouth. trying to get Dude, me and, me and... <laughs> Me and Bob always joke about that because I've never been like, and you know, it's like now being older, it's like, I feel like it was to my detriment to not be a guy that jams that jammed, right. because, you know, it's just, all it does is make you better. You yeah. know, it's, it's just a great like, way to network too. You, But yeah. And you connect with people on a different level and you get past the, you know, being nervous or being afraid to 
play in front of people right, or yeah. what level you're on. Like, oh, I can't play with that guy because he's better than me and blah, blah. And you just get past that because you're just, you know, there yeah. all the time. And so we joke about it all the time, but <laughs> we don't. But I've actually played with Bill probably, I don't know, like eight time five to ten times that's crazy you all know on stage yeah yeah, yeah. but but wow. for fun because right. because the first season of the show and this is a i don't remember what i said last time so i don't know i might fucking no that's you may fine. not be able we're, to we're use good we, we, we did our homework okay. we'll make sure the guy <laughs> all right conversation, so, not, not to double but, up anything but we uh but yeah when we first were doing the first season I knew he played drums. For F is for family, by the way. Yeah, for F is for family. So I do the music with a buddy of mine, Vince Jones. Mm -hmm. And we and so we were in Vince's studio. Because the first season, we did it all like... Vince is a really killer keyboard player. Okay. And he plays like... He's a musical director for Sarah McLaughlin. All right. Okay. And he's played with um, Alanis Morissette and Dave Kahan. And, mm -hmm. all, and he's, he's incredible. Yeah. And so... So we uh, would do everything live. Uh -huh. Like he would play keys on everything, like, but not like MIDI keys, like actual, like he has right. all old whirlies oh, and all these cool. keyboards. So he would play and then, you know, be like, okay, dude, I'll play bass and, you know, I'll play guitar and then we'll sing and blah, blah, blah. So, um, and he lived in a different house that had like a really built out second room for like live recording and shit. So, um, so we had to do this like Steppenwolf cover okay for like an 11 second piece of steppenwolf right so i was like oh bill plays drums let's just get him to play like and then he'll be able to play drums on his own show his own like, show. yeah, yeah. Right. that's so cool so we recorded it there's video somewhere i have um and you know he he did good and we were like oh wow and then he and i became friends during that season more so and would hang out and shit and then um we we went to dinner one night and then we talked about it because he's a uh, a massive Guns N' Roses fan. Yeah. And he talked about how when he was a teenager he used to play uh play along with Appetite front mm -hmm. to back. Whoa. Yeah. Like fucking the whole thing. Yeah. So the next but I told this story already, right? And the one where he played at my kids benefit no, I don't was think slap. So. Okay. I don't think so, so so we're um so I have, so every year, so my kid goes to public school uh -huh. and every year, uh, well, before I would start at the public school, uh, my friend Donovan would put together a band, like an all-star band yeah. okay. to play for the parents at the beginning of every year to get them like into like fundraising and all this kind of okay. shit. Smart. So I did it then because I grew up in LA. I went to public school yeah. and it's specifically to fund like the art and music and library yeah. and gym teachers at the school yeah. like that money pays for that stuff at the school up in Laurel Canyon and so I was like yeah you know I'm totally into it I'll play you know whatever so I did it for a few years and then my kid my son was only two so he wasn't even in school yet right. he was in like preschool anyways it comes to he he's about to go to school we hear about this school we don't live in the district we're like this school's fucking awesome it's like one of the best schools in la public blah blah and so we end up getting into the school right because of that because i play the thing i knew the principal by then and blah 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 then it got grandfathered to me because donovan's kids were out of the school and so then it became my job to put together the band to play the parents like the thing. fundraiser yeah so the first year i did it which was where i had to so i've been doing this thing for eight years wow. this okay, year yeah. is the first year i'm not doing it oh. but i did it for eight years and so three or four no my kid was he's in fifth grade so it was like five years ago wow. i so the first year i had to like bring the band in i brought slash and duff <laughs> right well, why not why not right yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's like this little stage. It's like just for the parents. Oh There's God, like 150. There. <laughs> there was like 150, you know, parents. Yeah. And they're just starting in the school. They've Some of them, you know, their kids are coming to kindergarten. They don't know anything about the school. Right. They've been there for a week. And they're like, hey, you know, you come do this parents thing and whatever. People drink and get kind of nuts. And, <laughs> and so I brought Duff and Slash. And I think Chris Cheney from James was playing bass too. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the rest of the set, he did it a bunch of times. And this kid, Andrew Watt, who's a big 
songwriter guy who's blowing up. He did like all these like like he plays with Post Malone and okay. Okay. Uh, something Cabello chick and. I don't know. Yeah, all these yeah. people, I'm too old to like. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 My kid. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so him and, and Frankie, you know, has done it every year, yeah. and so so I asked Bill, I'm like, dude, you want to play, um, Back in Black with me and Frankie at the show, and he's like, yeah, I think it was Back in Black, and he's like, uh, he got like kind of nervous. So he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. At first I asked him, he's like, oh yeah, I'll do it, and then you know, it came close. It was like Thursday, and I'm like. You know, dude, you want to do it? And he's like, oh, I, yeah, yeah. He gets nervous. He's like, oh, I don't want to embarrass myself. I'm like, dude, you'll be fine. Yeah, I know you could do it. Yeah, you can come to sound check. You can play, blah blah. Right. He's like, all right, cool. He comes to sound check, and Cheney's playing bass, and me and Andrew are playing guitar. Frankie sings, and I didn't tell him that I was going to have Duff and Slash play on that song instead of Chris <laughs> and Andrew. Him. I didn't tell him <laughs> on purpose. Yeah. And so, <laughs> Cause I didn't want him to get freaked out and right. I wanted him to do it. Right. You know? And so he, uh, so he shows up and he hadn't met Duff and Slash at that point. And so he, so there's like a backstage. So basically it's at a tennis club, uh -huh. right? Up, up in, up in the Hills. And so you're at this tennis club and the backstage is like behind, like back there, yeah. Yeah. like on the other side of the club behind where all the people. So I'm on stage yeah. People are here, and the backstage is back there, which is just like a small area. Right, right. So, and every year, so I get kind of nervous because I don't know, like I won't have you know guys like Duff and Slash show up early, right? Because I don't want them fucking hanging out forever. Right. So they'll show up like while I'm playing. So I never know. Like I'm always nervous. Like what if they don't find it? What if they're, right. there's there's no cell service up here? It's you know what if they don't show up? What if they change your mind, you know, whatever. Exactly. I'm like, the, and I'm playing like thinking all of every year, like whoever's the special guest, is, right. whatever. So I guess Bill and Slash and Duff all were hanging out back there. And so Bill knew, like everyone knows like when they're supposed to come up. Yeah. Cause Slash and there was two, it's like Paradise City and It's So Easy or something at right. the end. And then there was the, the ACDC song right before. And so I, I, so I see Bill and he comes up and he kind of sneaks like during, you know, right before that song, mm -hmm. he sneaks on, he's sitting at the drum set and I'm like, Oh, you know, I'm going to introduce my friend, you know, Bill Burr, blah, blah, playing drums. And, and I'm like, Oh, and then, uh, I have two other guests and, and it turns out that slash went to that elementary school when he was a kid. Oh, oh weird. Gosh. Which I didn't know till that night. Oh my God. And so then alumni. Yeah. And so <laughs> we, so then I introduce them and he, so they, they start walking up and I look back, dude, and I see his, he just was like, <laughs> <laughs> like literally just had his head down yes. and we talked afterwards and he's like, dude, I just couldn't even lift my head up. Cause if I did, I would just become a fucking teenage kid again. He, there's a podcast, an episode of his podcast where he talks about the whole thing, oh yeah. like gosh. the week after it happened. Oh my and, gosh. uh, and so he, so he. So he played, but yeah. he just like was looking down the whole time. <laughs> oh, man. And I'm like turning around, like looking at him like, dude, you're in Velvet Revolver. <laughs> dude, you're and, doing it. Yeah. And, and he just like looked up for a second. And he got, like, had this big grin on his face. And then he kind of fucked up. Like it wasn't noticeable, but it was a little like, you know, just something little. And, and, uh, so then he, so, you know, like we talked afterwards and we're all like talking and introduce him. The best part of the story, which he tells on his podcast too, is like he, so he was supposed to go right after that to go do a set at the comedy store okay. on sunset. He leaves. He's like, Oh dude, I gotta go. You know, he goes and he, so what, what I found out later was, so I had someone had given me a video of it. Right. Okay. So it's basically him playing with slash and duff. And, right. and so I sent him the video. Yeah. And so he's at the comedy store. He gets the video and he's just like, and they were like, hey, so are you going to go up? He's like, nope, I'm not going to fuck this up. This is like the best evening of my life. <laughs> the fucking greatest thing has happened to me in the last 23 years. And I'm not going to fuck it up by going on stage and fucking, you know, ruin <laughs> yeah. this high. Right, yeah. right. So he's just like showing guys, you know, other comedians backstage, the video of him playing with That's Duff and Slash. so funny. He gets in his car. He had a Prius at the time. He pulls out like 
remember him talking about that. It His funny. Prius? Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny because if you pull out, so if you, if the comedy store is like right on Sunset, okay, so if yeah. you pull out, you're like, you, you know, you have to pull to the edge to be able to see like both ways and right. you're, you know, people are walking by you and stuff. Yeah. On the sidewalk and he says this like attractive girl is like looking at him and he's thinking like he's all on a high like yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. she probably wants my <laughs> autograph or something whatever yeah. and she's like like kind of signaling to him and he he like rolls down his window and she's like are you uh are you ernesto our uber driver <laughs> and he's <laughs> he was like oh, night ruin. Yeah. <laughs> wop, wop, wop. The universe just, is so humbling oh, sometimes. Yes. Oh, it's that's beautiful. Too funny. Yeah. It's beautiful. That's a beautiful story. That really is. That really is. Um yeah. and it's great that you get to to work with him on F is for Family because it's such a cool show. Yeah. Um and actually I actually wanted to start by talking about that because that was something we didn't get a chance to talk about on the last time that you were on the show. Um because we talked a lot about you in bands and right. your career in bands, but you do have this awesome career composing music. I mean, your work with Sons of Anarchy, but also now with F is for Family, going into, correct me if I'm wrong, it's third season? Yes. Coming up, right? Yeah. Um, what is that process like? I mean, like what, like you and your and your writing partner, you said you're, like, you're playing it live. Like, is it, do you draw from kind of the the way that you used to write in, in bands or is it a completely different like back to the drawing board kind of process it's really different yeah, yeah. because when i so when i did sons uh i did the theme song first right and what was so cool about it to me which was foreign to me was the fact that you try and cram all this information into 30 seconds right, right. you know what i mean and then like later we did a, a two and a half minute version for mm -hmm. itunes but that was because of the popularity of the song yeah right? but you know it was like there was a lot of cut and paste and you know read just verse chorus you know which was it we'll make this part longer and then right, we'll put right. it there you yeah. know then we'll do a little bridge and a little solo in the middle and, yeah and um but what what i really was kind of super into was the fact of like oh wow it's like this mini song like you don't have to think about am i going to do you know am i going to do the chorus like four times and then I got to do it eight times a double chorus right. like on the way out mm -hmm. or do we out go out on the chorus is there an intro do we need to do the you know it's like you you're cramming all this information into such a small space that I don't know it was just really cool to me it's like you think of a hook and you think of a little bit of stuff before and after and that's it and yeah. so it kind of just shifted everything for me and then after I did that I did my first um actual like composer job where i was doing you know all the underscore of mm. this um abc show mm. and it was a cop show so it was an hour-long cop show so it was just all like you know full-on underscore like yeah like really you know trying to set the emotional tone of yeah. what was happening like some guys partner just got killed or whatever so do you get like the scenes and then yeah. you have to put the music under that yeah okay basically the process is so and i didn't know any of this dude when i went and did that first show i yeah. did it with a buddy of mine john and he had done it before and he um you know so we you basically you go to what they call a spotting session so they do like a like a, a what they call a locked version which means we're not going to change it anymore okay okay there's no more editing like this is it right? yeah they have a time code stamped on it and they'll say like and then you'll sit in a room with like the whoever's the most music focused guy, whether it's a producer or the director or mm -hmm. typically mm -hmm. not the director, but usually like a producer or the, you know, the creator or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. And so you'll all sit in a room and you'll basically watch the episode and then you take notes and mm -hmm. you go by the time code and you just say like and they'll oh, and they'll temp in a lot of stuff. Like the editors, when they're editing, they'll put in like temporary music. Like clips and stuff to like because to give you people, an idea, give you a starting point. Yeah, because yeah. dudes, because the dude will say like the creator comes in and says my overall tone for F is for Family is you know all takes place in the seventies. I want blah blah blah, but right. I want a lot some, of wah pedals. And yeah, <laughs> but I want also like you know uh, like orchestrated stuff because one of the guys, the co-creator, was from The Simpsons. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah. he likes a lot of like actual orchestration and shit. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, and they'll come in, and they'll say this is the this is the this is the vibe overall. And the editors usually have like big libraries and drives full of all kinds of music, and they'll right. find stuff and they'll source stuff. And so then they'll just put in a bunch of stuff, 
you know, in scenes and you'll watch it and then they'll say like, oh, this is good, except it's too, you know, schmaltzy or this right. is too dramatic or this gives away the fact that this guy's going to, you know, lose his dog or whatever. And so then you just sit there and you take notes and it's like, oh, you wanted to start at, you know, 1133 and you go and you sit there and you write all this shit down and then you go back to your place and you, you know, you make a list of like, okay, these are all the scenes and uh, you just start knocking down the list. And, you know, the first season we did it all together and now, you know, it's because it's, everyone's trying to get more work and do right. other things too. So it's like, I mean, I pretty much, we talk on the phone, me and Vince, mm -hmm. but we just basically, we get the list, you know, we do the spotting session and then we just say like, okay, I'll do six, nine, 12, yeah. 13, 14 and 12, you know, whatever. And then he'll be like, okay, cool. Or, well, what do I want to do this one. And then that's it. And then we'll just, I'll just do it all here. So you kind of split up the work with him Yeah, and you do it all here. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's yeah, really cool. Is it any different because it, of the the medium? It's an animated show, so it's like are the cues a lot shorter? Like because it's not like, necessarily. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, like for instance, this is like a a pool party, and they want, you know, they're like, oh, we need something that sounds like the beach boys oh my god is this from the third season yeah oh my god yeah so yeah we'll definitely yeah cut we'll this. definitely cut this out yeah. but so this is so cool for me right now so like I, i'll get like a master i'll get like the whole episode right, right? and then i'll say like i'll get this lit should i am i giving you too much detail and drawing this out too no much? no not at all are you sure yeah yes. no I, i'm really curious about this. okay so i'll show you wait no this is very exciting for us okay so this is for instance, the, okay, 308. Okay, so for instance, this oh. is this is the sheet. These are all the cues from episode eight of the third season, 308. All right. So there's 26 pieces of music. Now, some of them are, you know, this one is almost a minute. This yeah. one's almost 42 seconds. There's some that are like five seconds long. There's some that are... This one's 20 seconds. This one's, you know, some are two minutes. Sometimes they're three minutes. Wow. Sometimes they're like, there's one here. Uh, where is it? There's like a long one because it's like at a cocktail party. Uh huh. So it's basically just the background music. Mm -hmm. But right here, cocktail party 320. So this one's two and a half minutes. And it's just like, lounge music at a yeah, cocktail party yeah. so this is basically it's a pool party and they wanted something that sounds like the beach boys right so then <laughs> right. they'll have all the notes it's like here's a start time here's the end time that matches with that time code yeah and then it'll say like source from speakers bad indian music or this one this one just says uh Radio's on happy rock music, mid sixties vibe, but in the notes it said Beach Boys. So do you put the effects on it to make it sound like it's coming from an old radio here? Or is no, because that? that's a music editor. Okay. Because yeah. typically because if I do that, then it's stuck like that. Yeah. Right. And that then makes they sense. can't un right. affect it. Okay. So I usually just send do, raw tracks. Yeah. So the then this is so like this is the scene with just what's in there. There's no I didn't think they tempt any music, but like, oh yeah, that's the temp music, and that's. Look, Otto, I'm pruny like you. Oh yes. Oh, look how long I can hold my breath. Hey, <laughs> Frank, good to see you. All right, so that's that, and then, uh, and then, I'll do this. So I did this. And then with no vocals and yeah. yeah, so basically, so that's it. So that's so cool. So you must pull from a lot of different 
influences yeah for sure your, your timeline yeah and they they have a lot of stuff that they want you know like as far as um as far as like specifics like yeah. with that they're like oh we want the beach boys or um with you know i've heard you know there's this kid in it now that plays guitar and he's like they're like oh we want like you know hendrixy kind of stuff or we want the song in the background of on vic's radio station to be like an almond Brothers song right. or we want and they're like like the one guy uh mike price who's the other co-creator who works still works on the simpsons yeah he's a yeah. writer and he um he is very of that um that simpsons mindset mm -hmm. so he's very like you know he'll say like oh i want this thing the gossamer wings and like a lot of like very you know eclectic but also like you know old standards that that half of them I don't know, you know, but yeah. my buddy Vince knows, you know, yeah. or like, mm -hmm. we need this thing from, you know, whatever. And so like Dave Garibaldi, blah, 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 right, whatever right. it is, yeah. you know? And, and, um, so it's cool. So it's like, they're, they're very, it's varied. And, and it's cool because you have to write in a different way. You know, you have to yeah. write, um, for the emotional effect of a scene yeah you know which is wholly different than mm -hmm. writing you know and, and it's taken me a long time to get out of the way you know because i came in as a guitar player and it's like and but when i did that first show i was doing a lot of stuff with you know not synths but you know like a lot of just pads and like, like midi mm -hmm. yeah and like a lot of midi yeah. stuff and like not playing any guitar and i did a show Cause like Wild West, which is Vince Vaughn's company mm -hmm. that does this show, um, I did uh, the show called Sullivan and Son that was like on it was like three seasons. It was a com it was like Cheers. Yes. Yeah. And it was a comedy, and you know, like I didn't play any guitar on that show except for like two cues, and I just did like I got a mandolin and I learned how to play a bunch of chords mm -hmm. and you know, wrote every cue like with mandolin and, awesome. you know, uh, Vince did accordion and it was like accordion cause we did the theme song and they're like, we want every s piece of music on the show to sound like that band mm -hmm. was playing the music. Okay. Oh my God. And so it was like accordion drums. It's almost like acting at that point. Yeah. You have to like put yourself in somebody else's shoes and, yeah. and act like them, but you're doing it musically. Exactly. That's so cool. But you're acting like yourself acting like someone. Else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, it's so, it's great, man. And it's like, it changes and you know, sometimes it's, stressful in a really different way than being in a band you know it's like mm -hmm. if you know you have a deadline and you have to make this and you can't think of anything yeah. like there's been nights where you know like especially when you do like network stuff like that show i did was abc and it's like it's fucking you got a deadline you know and right. it's like it's a big deal and you're it's fucking stressful you know and you're I like bet. it's three in the morning you're like oh my god i have two more things to finish and I ain't fucking, I do not know what to do. This sounds like shit. And you're the only one there sitting there like at one in the morning. Right. Like, oh my God, what the fuck am I going to do? And you can't just give up. Right. You, know, you got to fucking finish it. So drink more coffee. Definitely yeah. coffee. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Jeez Louise>. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you ever get, do, especially with like a deadline like that, do, do you ever like turn something in and get a note back? Like, do they ever like, you have to change it? Oh yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Well, you even add to you the stress then like that, you know, it's funny because I was thinking about it today cause I was finishing, um, I, I finished yesterday all my stuff for that episode 308. So we got two episodes left to do music for, for, uh, the third season of F is for family. And, um, but it's actually like, it actually alleviates some stress because look, at the end of the day, it's like you're on a team, yeah, you know, yeah. and you're just trying to help everyone get to the finish line for their vision. Yeah. yeah. It's not like a precious thing where you're like, well, this is my music. And it's a representation of yeah. me. And it's because yeah. it's not, dude. Yeah. It's like you're providing a service and you, you know, obviously they want me 
and Vince to because they like what we do. Yeah. But you know, I'm fucking. I'm just part of the team. Right. And and so you know, in that respect, it's like you learn to just be less emotionally invested. emotionally. Yes. Thank you. No Why you interview him? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, you know, it's so. But you also know that there's notes are a possibility, and you and like you're you're not a mind reader and right, yeah. and they could change it just because you know and and it it's not usually one person because it's like sometimes they'll send episodes to Netflix and Netflix will say you know what this thing doesn't really it's typically not music but right. it can be you know they'll say like we don't want music here at all or and it might be some cue that I labored over for a, a whole day for one one minute thing you know with a bunch of strings and you know orchestration and yeah. shit but also, like when I start to get like that, especially now that I've been doing it for a while, I just get like, just send it in, dude. Just don't tweak out on yeah. the perfect bass part or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. you just are like, let's just send it. You know, you're going to do a thousand more of these kind of things. And, you know, if they like it, cool. If they want you to change it, you'll change it. And there's not going to be anybody that's like, oh, I didn't like the bass line in that scene. You know, watching it as a viewer. Yeah. You yeah. Know, nobody's going to. Yeah. Well, there might be, you know, but it's like, I don't Screw care at that, that point because I'm like, <laughs> I didn't like that yeah. guy anyway. Because, you know what? Because I don't hear it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so then yeah. it's okay. You mentioned that um, you, at, for uh, that one moment, you, you bought a mandolin and learned some chords and started writing stuff on a mandolin. Is there like, what's the weirdest instrument you've had to put into composing music? Is there like something just crazy that was asked of you? Like, theremin yeah like is there anything like a oh shoe box like, guitar there's, over there, there maybe? there's a lot of not anything i can think of like i mean you know because there's so many like the thing is too i think as a musician that's interested in other instruments it's mm -hmm. like you can like once i had the mandolin and then like that you know cigar sig fiddle they call it yeah you know I definitely start like you get a bug, you know, and then you're like, mm -hmm. oh, I want to get a fucking, I got to get a ukulele. And yeah. I got to get a like, but there's different size ukuleles. That's what like, I would do. I would be going that? to weird music stores yeah. finding like weird rattlers. Yeah, there's and... this place called McCabe's on like, I don't know, if you're on the west side at all, like yeah. towards Santa Monica in the next, in while you guys are here. It's, and it's all like those kind of instruments. It's like eclectic, awesome. weird, like triangular shaped um, mandolin you know weird like every weird instrument you've seen like every country band guy playing or yep. yeah. like those all those instruments exist there oh, like that's awesome. where i went to get a mandolin that's where i went to get that sounds like fun though that yeah it's like totally blast. fun but yeah. i you know for me i just i just didn't it, and there's the thing is they're so specific sounding and i think the one thing actually that stopped me down that road was i so the first season I did of Sullivan and Son, I borrowed a, a mandolin uh -huh. from this dude. It was like an ovation. So it looked like a mini ovation acoustic okay, with the round yeah, back and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I did the first season like that. And then the second season, I was like, I'm going to go to McCabe's. I'm going to buy like a really good mandolin, you know. So I buy this mandolin. And I swear to God, I did the first episode. And they're like, uh, this sounds different. It's like can you what what's different about this like music like are you using something different or it just doesn't sound right and i was like oh well, i was used a different mandolin they're like we, we like the old mandolin oh my God. so Do you i had to, just got used to the old mandolin yeah because yeah, it or? just it, i mean i guess it's if you listen to like a really old vintage guild acoustic versus a plastic backed ovation they're going to sound really different but yeah they were used to that sound they didn't know anything. They weren't like super musical guys. Right. They just were like, it just sounds different. And we <laughs> like that sound because we wanted it to be consistent with the first season. Ah. So I had to go and find, so I had to return that and then find like a ovation, oh my God. A, you know, thing on eBay. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no. so then okay. I get kind of like, doesn't yeah. sound like fun. <laughs> it doesn't. So it kind of like, it steered me away from just buying a bunch of instruments which yeah. you know like it's probably I for the better do. yeah and <laughs> plus with all any kind of and there's so much stuff now in virtual instruments yeah, yeah. you know that makes it great like companies like native instruments or you know whoever that just make so much killer stuff that you can really get like an incredible sounding you know 
Harmon keyboard. Yeah, or it's really impressive. Like Arturia, looking. that yeah. company makes killer all kinds of key, like Moogs and yeah, and Farfisas and clavinets and just so you you don't really have to go out and i mean it's always cool when you go to a place and they're like like vince has a lot of that stuff and mm-hmm. keyboards and you just go and you're like oh that's cool you know like but i don't know i just <laughs> i'd rather spend it on oh shoes or something <laughs> or tennis <laughs> you know, shoes just, the purple ones. or just virtual instruments where you yeah. just you know it's like you're not because it's it's very specific. Yeah. That Sig Fiddle sounds like one thing. Right. You yeah. know, that mandolin sounds like one thing. And then you're just constantly buying. But, you know, I mean, I guess it's like shoes. You know, yeah. it's like you only really need one pair of shoes for running and one pair All for. Right. But All I right. have fucking 40. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. like because I like those and I like. Those. Yeah. yeah. I'm the same way with Nike running shoes. I probably have. Yeah. I don't know. Ten pairs of this shoe. In right. different colors. Yeah. Sometimes when we do mug releases, I'll buy a pair of shoes in that mug color and I'll take pictures of it. <laughs> I'm so yeah. Bad. It's it's weird. I know, dude. You Humans feel weird, weird animals, about it when man. you talk about it, but it's like we all fucking do it. Yeah. We've all got a thing, you know? It's like Jeff either... is shaking his head because he knows. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's shoes or it's comic books or uh, it's, yep. you know, baseball hats or yeah. whatever it is. Everyone's got their thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? Um, Speaking of that, I mean, do you still find yourself? I, you have a plethora of instruments in the studio, and I know you have even more in your house. Do you find yourself buying guitars on a whim from time to time? That I, th- yeah, that I do. Yeah, you know, I <laughs> yeah, still because it's like <laughs> you can't take that away yeah, from you. Yeah, because <laughs> in my head, I'm like, well, I might use you know that thing for one cue on one episode, but like you know, a mandolin. If I got to use it for a whole season i'm gonna buy one right and guitars i'm like i'm always gonna use them so right you know if i like my buddy brian plays in um paul mccartney's band Mm -hmm. and he that that black sg is his signature model Mm. and it's killer because it's like it's got split um love that whammy bar yeah and it's and and what's cool about that is you can take that whole thing off just off the top without unscrewing it it's like it's got these built in like metal saddles basically that just sit there. And if you take all the strings off, you can basically just take it off. And then it comes with the other like stop tail piece, the regular um, SGs come with. So it's got that and and then it's got like series parallel push pull pots on both pickups and it just sounds killer. So, you know, and then I always want an SG in that Pelham blue, blue color. So, you know, every once in a while. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And you know what? Uh, And I'll like, I have guitars and stores that are just sitting there forever. And I'm like, I'm never going to play that thing. So I'll sell that. And then get, that's my like way of doing it. It's like, well, if I sell this, then I can get that. And And it's not like they depreciate in value too much. I mean, it depends. Yeah. If you get the right ones, especially. Is there anything that you don't have that you would like to get as far as guitars? I mean, bases. I'm sure there's a bunch, you know, I'd yeah. love to have a Rick yeah. Rickenbacker yeah. bass. I'd love to have, especially when you're doing like 70s stuff, you should yeah. have a Rick in here. Dude, that there is- was a scene in that I just did yesterday and the, there's a band in the scene and that the guy, like, like yeah, tune Rick Rickenbacker. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yes. And it looks so like, it was like exact, That's you know, so version of it. So, I and it's like, such oh. a signature sound yeah. too. There's nothing that sounds like a Rickenbacker. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not. You know, I'm a guitar player, but I love playing bass. But yeah. there's and there's like uh those Lakeland basses. Have you uh-huh. ever played those? Those uh-huh. are killer. I'd love to have one of those. Those are nice. Um, the Bob Glob model is killer. They're just like P basses. Um, you know, so I'd all love- of our listeners and viewers, this is the Christmas list for Dave. If yeah, you can, uh, please send the the GoFundMe will list can, right you here. Can send your guitars and basses. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, like, I'd love to have an Explorer. I'd love to have yeah. a you know Flying V. I'd love to have. You don't have a, a Flying of, V. I don't. That's insane. That's today. insane. I know. You need one with the um, the diamond stud metal, like it looks like the back of a Jeep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> diamond plate. Yeah, yeah. The diamond yeah. plate. <laughs> that would be yeah, perfect. Dude, Love the diamond plate. <laughs> for sure. For sure. With like etched in flames and. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Um. So, is is the only composer work you're doing now after family, or are you or do you have other composer work that you're working on? I always do something like I did. Right now, you mean? Um, yeah. I'm, and, and obviously, I mean, stuff you can talk about. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. like I always do. 
you know, like, dude, it's like every job I get, I've gotten just through people I knew, mm. you know, and it's like, but at the end of this block, mm. if you guys go outside and you drive to the end, it's, there's a dead end and mm. it goes, there's about six houses down. And my neighbor is uh, a producer and like I was walking my dog with my kids and he's like, Hey, you did, uh, you did Sons of Anarchy, right? Cause I have this show American Grit and maybe you could do the theme song for that. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. You know? And then we got along good and there was this like, I shouldn't say this because there's like maybe some serious animal lovers on your show, but I killed this rattlesnake mm -hmm. with this guy because it was right in front of my yard and there was like all these kids coming over. Yeah. Dude, there was a rattlesnake. You're a hero. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There You're was a, a rattlesnake, I swear to God, this big. Like I have pictures, it was like this fat. And the neighbor, th this producer guy came over and knocked on my door and him and his wife and they was like, there's a fucking huge rattlesnake right in front of your house. There was kids coming over for a play date. My kids were like six and four. And you got yeah. a dog. And yeah, you know and that. it's like, I'm afraid they're gonna, the snake's gonna get through and be in the backyard when totally. the kid. So his wife is like a crazy competitive archer. <sighs> so you go to the end of the block and there's a cul-de-sac and she'll, and like, You'll sometimes you'll go out there and she has one of those bows that's like got like the the long thing that sticks out for a balance and it's got like twenty pulleys on it. Yeah, and it's, it's got a, its own stand and it's yeah. like six feet tall. Oh yeah. And she what she does is she opens her garage and she has the competitive target inside in the back of the garage. Yeah. And she stands out in the middle of the cul-de-sac and just shoots arrows into her garage wow. for target target practice. So that's like how I first met them yeah you know like, and then hi what are you yeah doing? And she's, what are you she's badass yeah. and so made? she comes back she has these snake boots they're actually boots for walking in tall grass and like ivy and stuff oh they're that's, not made out of snakes they're no made to they're protect you from yeah snakes. and like snakes can't bite through them so she comes back with her snake boots i'm like dude you have a flathead shovel because we'll have to like hit the thing and we'll just like try and chop its head off and and so that's how he and I became friends. And then the TV show <laughs> thing happened. And then I did American Grit. And then, so right now, uh, he has a show on on CBS called Pink Collar Crimes uh -huh. that just came out. So I did some music for that. Um, I'm doing the this theme song for the NFL Network for Thursday Night Football. Excellent. Which is what I'm doing now, um, which is coming out for this season. And then I'm going to do some other stuff because I became friends with the um, creative director for NFL Network. And so I'm doing some other music. I'm going to try and do this um, this kind of all-star thing for uh, some more music for the playoffs. Awesome. You know, um, so, yeah, it's just always... Always work Always to do. busy. Yeah. And you're always making new connections that always yeah. need music for something. Yeah, you know? I mean, everyone needs everybody music. Needs I mean, that's why you... Right? That's why somebody lives in L.A., right? Because you're always going to be talking to somebody who's doing something that you may be able to be a part of, and then yeah. everybody stays... I mean, it's trippy it for me because it's like I was born and raised here. Yeah. yeah. Like in Hollywood, basically. Yeah. So. yeah, interesting, yeah. So it's like that's just my life. So it's it's just funny, you know, to see like, the transplants and the people come in yeah. trying to try for that reason. Yeah. You know, where it's like, I'm just here anyways. And <laughs> I know a lot of those people because slash and I went to junior high together. Right. Yeah. Joey and I were in, you know, wasted youth together yeah. in, in Blasco. It's like, we were all in these little bands that would play with, you know, tool or rage or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, we just all know each other because we've all just seen each other for years, yeah. you know? And so, it's just different, you know, and it's trippy to see, you know, and it's, it's like kind of sad, I guess now that I have kids, like to see people come with expectations of, yeah. you know, wanting to pursue those kind of dreams and then, you know, they don't get it and they're yeah. like, LA sucks and blah, blah. And like, you know, not everybody's going to succeed yeah. whether you're talented or not. Exactly. You know, and it's just the way it goes, but. You got to put the work in if you really want it. Sometimes sure. you're not going to make it, and you have to be aware of that when you, the, when you first set out. That you, yeah, you, you may not you may not succeed at first or second or third or fourth or fucking ever. Yeah. But you got to try it if you actually want it. Yeah, and you got to you know I mean and dude, you see so many people like I mean I respect the guy that works as a waiter who's an actor that like it, I respect the guy that works yeah and you know pays his way instead of just not doing anything right and then complaining. 
that you're not getting work because you're putting so much like that was a big lesson for me early on was like you can't put this monetary pressure on your art right you right. know because then it suffers and it just becomes shitty and you get resentful at the art but it's not you know or the people that are preventing you from doing your art but it's like if you got a job then it doesn't matter really because yeah. you're still you know you're like making money you can pay for you can go on dates you can put gas in your car you know you can show up for your life and you know in a different way and I don't know. That's just like a big thing for me because I see a lot of people, you know, uh, fall into that trap. Well, I've know? always heard the opposite of like, don't have a plan B. If you if you want to make it as a musician, just do, just be a musician and that's it. But yeah. that's a really interesting perspective where if you hang everything up on your musicianship, yeah, that they're, you're you're anchoring. Your creativeness. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, creativeness is a is a channel, and the more filters right. you put into that channel, the the less you're gonna get the essence of what you're trying to do. Yeah. And hanging up everything on that music career, you're you're gonna fuck it up. Yeah. It's really interesting. Well, it's funny. Like a friend of mine said to me once, you know, he's like, "Look, dude," and he's an actor, you know, and he's like, "Look, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna act. You're probably gonna be an old man playing guitar on your porch." You know, you're always going to play guitar. You're yeah. a guitar player. But, yeah. you know, if you get to make a living at it, that's like, that's the gravy. Yeah. But you already have the thing. You already love to do the thing. So do the thing. Right. But you don't have to, you know, because for me it was, you know, I was going to, my plan B was to join the set builders union, you know, because I used to do art department on sets and I mm. love doing it. You yeah, know, and I, I, yeah. It's, I did it in college. It was, it it's was killer, fun, yeah. dude. I would do it today. Some days I'm like, oh, I should do that. Like when I'm not, like I'm in between <laughs> jobs, but then I'm like, like yeah, on. but then I'm like, oh, I'm going to fuck up my hands. And it's like, it's, Cause it's hard work, you know, it's oh, like yeah. you wake up and your hands, like you can't even open them. And it's like, it's brutal. And then I'm like, oh, you know, I only make, uh, maybe I won't. Maybe yeah. I won't. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I have a lot of friends that still do it. And you know, it's, but that was my plan B. You know, when my grandmother was like, oh, well, what are you going to do? Because like when I got in Velvet Revolver, I was 35, mm -hmm. you know, and, and up until then I was just like, I always had a job, you know, yep. working somewhere. Yep. And so I built sets and then it was like, well, what are you going to do? I'm like, I, I was, I actually said to her, you know, if I don't make it by the time I'm 35, I'll join the union and I'll fucking just build sets right because i like doing that that's that's which my... is not a not a bad path no it's yeah. awesome yeah you it's know it's really like creative great. yeah you get to work with great people totally. you get to travel you're on sets you you know the job doesn't stay the same all the time yeah it's rad and uh you know so that was my deal and literally it was like two weeks before i i was literally was gonna borrow the money from my dad to borrow to join the union which was like 2400 bucks and that's when i got in velvet revolver oh my gosh so literally and i just met my wife we had been going out like a month and so that's some awesome like your timing. whole life shift yeah it's point. it was wow. crazy dude and wow. at 35 that's really i yeah. mean that's weird that'd be like from two years from now for me where i feel like i have everything set but it, it could just take a turn yeah. you never know well it's, like my buddy brian ray you know it's like that was really inspiring for me because when he got in paul mccartney's band it was like 10 years ago it was no, it was two thousand two or three, mm -hmm. and like he was forty something. Yeah, you know, and it just it's cool because it's like you just never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, you know, like just I don't know where. For it. Yeah, I don't know where my next gig's coming from. Right. I don't know if there's gonna be season four for sure. I don't know, right. you know, but I know that when I just show up and I do the work, like you said, and and have, you know, and and, and like I said in the last thing, it's like if I show up with that attitude, I'm gonna I'm I'm. I'm here to be of service. Mm -hmm. I'm here yeah. to help you guys. I'm here, here to help, you know, whoever and I'm showing up and I'm fucking getting in and I'm getting my hands dirty and whatever. Then my experience has been things work out. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So for me, it's like, that's just where I got to try not to overthink things. Yeah. You I know, it's a sweet spot. Yeah. I think that's the, the, the way, and we said, we talked about this before. I think that's the way that, you know, everyone should think about life. And, and especially when you're pursuing a creative endeavor, because there's so much, like you said, there's so much weight put on, I need the money, I need the fame, I need whatever it is. If you want to create, yeah. if you want to be creative, whether it's building a set or playing guitar or whatever, just do the thing, like you said. Yeah. And it'll come. 
whether you're 20 or, or it might 30, not and that's or fine too or 70 yeah, yeah. Like, or it comes like not you know the, uh, when i when i learned i mean it's just like when you it's and it's always cool like in hindsight you know like right when you see like how it went from you know i was writing songs by myself and i just gotten a computer you know like i borrowed 800 dollars from the set the production designer that i was working on sets for and I was like, dude, I want to. I need to get a computer, you know. And Logic Four had just come out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> my roommate had a, a, you know, a version of it, and I would just tweak out and write like songs by myself and like yeah. get really into it. And then I met Mikey Fitz from Fitz and the Chantrums just somewhere locally. This was like in 2000 or something. Yeah. yeah. Way before that band, and you know, we just got along good. And I was like, dude, I got these things. You want to sing on it, you know? And then he started singing on it, and then. You know, and then it was, and then I w was did this other tour, and Duff's band opened for the band I was doing. It was in Japan, and Duff and I got along good. And then we started like hanging out, and then I was like, "Oh, dude, I'm doing this project," and he's like, oh, "I want to do that." And then we got it was me, Joey, and Duff, and Mikey Fitz, mm -hmm. and we were gonna do this thing. And then he called me. We were in the studio making some like a demo for that project. Yeah. And then he was like, "Oh, dude, I'm gonna." I think I'm gonna try this you know I gotta try this thing with Slash and Matt and like we just jammed with the two dudes from Buck Cherry and you know it's just like we're, I was all fucking bummed I was <laughs> yeah. so bummed like I was like oh, I'm just gonna be in a band with Joey again and <laughs> my dudes and the, you know and it was like I thought like okay well that's it that's that thing right and then you know two months later he's like dude you gotta come down and, yeah and so you just fucking never know did that project ever have a name I think we call it Chopper Reed. Chopper Reed. Yeah, like there's it. that. Do you know that? Have you ever seen that movie? No. It's a. It's. It, Duff's a big reader. Okay. So Duff, that's how we first started hanging out because he would read all these books, like you know Black Hawk Down. He read the book first, and then he's like, "Dude, you got to see this movie." He yeah. Says, I read this book, and so he read this book called Chopper Reed, and it's about this guy in Australia named Chopper Reed, who was this fucking crazy criminal, like just jailbird gnarly dude yeah and they made a movie about him and i think eric banna played chopper Reed. okay and you can see it probably on netflix or whatever yeah, yeah. and it's just a rad movie. and he was just such a character and a larger than life badass gnarly criminal and we just like the name so it's not yeah it, it rolls off the top awesome yeah so sure. that project was called chopper Reed. that's awesome do, do those tracks still exist somewhere yeah, I'm sure they're somewhere. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I have them somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you do. I don't know if they're on a cassette or <laughs> a track or yeah. in a computer or <laughs> on a hard drive somewhere. I don't oh, know. Oh, man. Um, you know, it happened the first time and it happened again. You are one inspiring motherfucker. Yeah. Dude. Oh, thanks, um, man. Move. And Seriously. And after the first time we had you on the show and we talked to you, I left that show just wanting to Crying. Just yeah, not crying. You know, <laughs> I left that show wanted to go seize the day and do all sorts of awesome stuff, and and you did it again. I, oh, I, thanks, man. I thoroughly enjoy talking with you, and I can't thank you enough for inviting us into your studio and your home, and uh, being on the show again. It was, yeah, it was so amazing. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I think, I think sometimes that's part of why I do these things because it's like I have to hear myself say it. You know what I mean? Yeah. To I totally understand. To re inspire that. myself yeah. or to be like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. that's how I think of things. And that's why I do things that way or, you know, to tell I totally get that. You know I think I mean? that's why podcasting in general has become such a, a phenomenon. Yeah. Is because people love recounting and, and re experiencing and really delving into their own thoughts. How many times do you sit down with somebody without uh, going through your Twitter uh, for hours and just having a deep discussion about your life. It yeah. just doesn't ever happen except for now that podcasting yeah. exists and yeah. we get to have these awesome moments like it's this. The truth. Yeah, and you guys, I mean, honestly, it's like when I, when we first talked about it, like just through emails, yeah. it was cool because when I really dug into like all your guests, yeah, it's so varied and yeah. kind of eclectic it's yeah it's just really cool you know it's like the guy because like i grew up you know just doing art like i i wasn't i didn't even play guitar until i was 15 or yeah. 14 it was i was just full-on art like kid you know cool. just drawing yeah. all the time yep doing i wanted to like draw comic books for a living you yeah. know so i was the only child i was super into 
you know, superheroes and this and that. And like, I'll go see all those Marvel movies, all oh, the yeah. DC movies. Even if you tell me they're terrible, me I'll go anyways. Me too. This, yeah. guy. Yeah. And, this guy. And so, you know, it's like into, so when I saw like just from astronauts to like, you know, comic book people yeah. to, you know, it was just really cool. Yeah, thanks, thanks, man. man. Good well, work. We, we, we want to create a good show and we want to have a good conversation and talk to interesting people. Well, right? Yeah. But more than anything, for me personally, like these moments, like Jeff said, it's inspiring. Yeah. And right. Oh, cool. It's elevating. I mean, yeah. we're friends with an astronaut. It's so yeah. weird. I never thought that would happen in my life. Yeah. And it's all because of this. It's, it's this elevating is the, the best word for it because I just feel like it lifts me and it makes me want to lift the other people around yeah. me and, and it just just so happens to be tied to a cool company that we work with. And Heck yeah. We get to yeah. do awesome things like this. So thank you very much, man. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Yeah, like Jeff said, thank you for inviting in us into your house and your awesome studio and letting me play on your guitars a little yeah, bit. This is so cool, man. So Right on. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. All right. This has been Fueled by Deathcast. A Death Wish Coffee Company podcast production. Thanks for listening.